July of 1979, I was in Texarkana, Texas. I was invited to come up to hold a full gospel businessmen's fellowship. And while I was beginning to minister, something really strange and peculiar happened to me. I wasn't too sure what it was, and I told the people, give me a moment if you would. I need to find out what's happening here. And what I did, I felt something strange and peculiar. I stopped at that time, and all of a sudden, just in a moment, I was gone. Something happened, and I found myself hovering over the United States of America. A very strange, peculiar, no doubt. I wasn't too sure what to do with it. And while I was there, I was looking down upon the United States, and I saw this nation, and I saw, above all things, I was permitted to see the spiritual leadership of the males of this nation. I was broken by it, even while I was standing there hovering and looking at the United States. I noticed that I was broken by the reality of the spiritual leadership of this nation among males that something had happened to our spiritual prowess. I was permitted this visual for a while and then the introduction to the spiritual condition that we had in this nation. And then some at that point I turned back and on my way back I noticed I came back into whether in my body or out but I just noticed I was standing there ministering again and I became aware of the fact that wow what happened and I at that time looked around at all the people that I was ministering to and I told them you're going to have to excuse me I'm I'm finished I'm not going to be able to minister I was so affected by it that I could no longer minister in the next three days I just spent my time in a in a room there where I was staying and for three days all I did was just cry pray and cry pray and cry and in that time the word of the Lord came to me that he was going to give me men and I began to pray over and over God give me men God give me men for three days I prayed God give me men the objective of that was to bring forth discipleship training up into leadership and what I actually saw during that three days as Christ began to interpret what happened to me was I saw the need for leadership spiritual leadership of this nation males primarily uh, that's what it was about it was really wasn't about the females but found out that with the that's the problem that we have uh, to me women rule children rule there's that scripture that you know women rule over them and then children are their oppressors I saw that to be true now at that point he gave me a strategy to begin to change that in this precious nation that has obviously lost its presence of God its purpose of God in our political realm and of course at that time I began to figure out well what would you have me to do and then came the commission and I use that term it was like a commission and the same one that Christ gave his disciples make the and his apostles make disciples of all the nations I knew at that time I was had a commission to make disciples primarily males take men alongside bring them into discipleship into sonship and from sonship into leadership and the tool became sonship and from then came the breakdown of the difference between sons versus ministers and, and uh, church versus the kingdom, uh, autocratic versus theocratic, the government of God, the rule of God, it began to all take place from that perspective. At that point, I knew that men need to be trained. They need to be discipled. I began to have a revelation, understanding the difference between a believer and a disciple, how to take someone from a simple fact of believing in Jesus Christ to where the Word of God comes so real to him that he's obedient to that word. And saw that America, the church, was filled with believers but few disciples. And leadership never came out of the uh, believers' congregation, it came out of the discipleship's life. I also noticed that Jesus Christ ministered to four groups, four different types, the 5,000, the 70, the 12, and the 3. He made revelations to the 12 and the 3 he never gave to the 70. He said things to the 70 he never said to the 5,000. What I found from that was almost uh, mathematical. Sunday mornings you've got your typical 5,000. Sunday night you've got your 70. Wednesday night you've got your 12. If there's anything else going on spiritually you've got your 3, Peter, James, and John. Well, I had to learn that, and then I found out that Christ does not make leaders out of the 5,000. There are not spiritual leaders of people that just go to church and come there uh, on a Sunday morning basis or just show up for whatever reason. There's a thousand reasons probably why people come, but none of those did he call to be leaders. The 5,000, he did not use them for leadership. The 70 was your pretty much your charismatic movement of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s of this nation. They rejoiced that 
They could heal the sick, cast out devils. They were excited about their gifts and their anointings. In fact, most of our leadership today is based upon the 70 principle, and that is just the Holy Spirit, power, anointing, gifts of healing, working of miracles. But even in that, that was still not the leadership of this nation. True leadership comes out of the 12 and out of the three. It doesn't come out of the 70, it doesn't come out of the 5,000. It's a narrow walk, straight and narrow, Christ spoke about. Few there be that find it. And I noticed at that point I began to work the strategy of God give me men. How do I take men and take them from a believer to a disciple uh, into sonship? And then from there setting them, seeing Christ set them up into leadership for Jesus Christ in America. This became a real struggle, a real difficult journey for me because at that time I did not know how to do that. And you have your traditional, typical church entity, you have your typical uh, and traditional discipleship training methods. And then I went to college, uh, Southern California College while in California while I was there uh, to learn how to be a minister. None of that worked. I found out that was not the way of the Lord. So to really bring men into true leadership, that was a very difficult challenge for me. I also knew that my own sonship, I did not understand it. I did not understand the clarity of believer disciples. There was a number of things that he began to speak to me about that I wasn't too sure of myself. And I had to do a lot of study, a lot of research, looking around, anything I could find, books, study, whatever I could. And then I looked at the leaders of that day that was bringing me the Word of God and even in at that point, most of it was not faith toward God, it was faith toward other things, toward healing or deliverance or prosperity and money, and I became disenchanted with the, even the concept of the restoration. And at that point, uh, something began to happen to me, and that was the foundational stones that Christ began to reveal, said, you'll need to know these out of Hebrews chapters 5 and 6. I had to learn those six foundational stones that was presented there and uh, understand them in a more clear way because I was surprised to find that at that time I got born again in 1970 in fact on the sidewalk of Downey California on a Friday night and uh, that began my my journey from there down into Arkansas and of course at, from Arkansas uh, I was called over into Texarkana to hold that full gospel businessmen's meeting and that's where I got my commission of making disciples and God give me men but to go back for just a moment to, to uh, down in California where I got born again, that's began at that time was the 70s. And then the 70s was the restoration of uh, teachers and then uh, primarily the uh, uh, faith toward God or uh, doctrine of faith. Uh, knowing that Christ restores all things based upon that's how it was taken out in the he, the fact that uh, 1 Corinthians says that he sent in the church first apostles, second daily prophets, thirdly teachers. At that point, he began to restore them in that order. He restored them in the 70s in the teachers, and then in the 80s and 90s became the prophets, and then in the, the 90s to the turn of the century came the restoration of the apostolic. Well, at that point, the teachers in the 70s was teaching a lot on faith toward God. And uh, I, I did not understand some of that. I was just born again. But when I started studying it myself, I found out that all six of those foundational stones of uh, repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of baptisms, resurrection of the dead, laying on the hands, eternal judgment, all six of those uh, are uh, just babies, bottles. They're, they're milk of the word. Uh, at that time, it was brought, brought forth and taught like it's the meat of God, and we have arrived. But the truth of the matter is, it was just six foundational stones, or if you would, the first oracles of the principles of Jesus Christ. These were the first bottles. If you look at Hebrews chapter 5, the last few verses, uh, he talks about it being the milk of the word and not the meat. It talks about being ready for babes and not for real spiritual people. So we saw that I saw at that time the condition of the United States of America, and I'd be able to put that together and saw that when Christ showed me the spiritual leadership of this nation, we were only sucking on the second bottle. We had not even got into all the other bottles yet. We were just simply in the second bottle. Uh, repentance from dead works is the first one. Faith toward God's the second one. And here's the United States of America in only nursing on the second bottle of six bottles. And we we're already thinking we are spiritual and have arrived. Well, that was no reason why we didn't have any type of spiritual, real spiritual leadership. Because at that point, faith toward God 
uh, was supposed to be restored in faith toward God, but it wasn't directional toward God. It was faith in yourself, faith in your faith, faith in money, faith in healing, faith in faith in what you could get. It became primarily a faith structured for what you could get for yourself from God rather than faith toward God. At that time, it, it blossomed and bloomed into many independent ministries in America. Every man had his own ministry, his own cause, very independent, uh, no longer a corporate move of God, but an individual, and then it became more like a business rather than anything else. So then it became a terrible breakdown. And at that point, that breakdown was just not going to work anymore. We were losing something dramatically in this nation, and what we were losing was the true leadership the true power behind what God wanted to do with this nation. And even the leaders were going more and more. If you look at them today even, most of it is about grandeur, massive, large. Uh, it's about being successful, fame, glory, recognition, everything that Christ didn't even minister to us at all on. Everything, in fact, uh, it has nothing to do with Christ. It, it neuters the strength of the males. It takes away their spiritual prowess and, and strength. So it was a return back to God give me men. What was the purpose of that? Uh, what was he trying to accomplish? What was he trying to fulfill? What's Christ trying to rot in me? And it was men that would give God glory and honor. Men that would not call it after their own ministries, Randy Shankler Ministries, Randy Shankler Evangelistic Association. Jesus said, if you come in your own name, people will follow you. And we do that today. We name it after ourselves. And then came the, the ministry of Christ when he said the Holy Spirit, he won't speak of himself. He won't say a thing about himself. You can't get the Holy Ghost talking about himself, and that's pretty much what all the ministries of today are. They talk about themselves, their visions, their dreams. It's become a, something that uh, I became deeply troubled about. In fact, it's one of the things that took me off national TV years ago. I couldn't keep doing that. I wasn't interested in my fame, my glory. I wasn't interested in being popular, accepted, uh, financially a millionaire at the, at the cause of people who send the monies. I, was, I had no interest in doing that. Uh, I saw it as beginning the uh, spiritual whoredoms, if you would, the prostitution, if you would, pimps and prostitutes. It became um, uh, something I was no longer uh, desiring to be a part of. So I broke out of it, continued my studies into Jesus Christ and what he wanted to do. And I found out that Christ said three things about the Holy Spirit. He says, he will testify of me. He will witness of me and he will glorify me. Now that set my pattern, that I'm not here to testify of myself. I'm not here to spread my name. I'm not here to get recognition. I'm here to promote Jesus Christ. I'm here to testify of him, to witness of him, and above all things, by the grace of God, to be able to glorify him in a way that he himself receives the promotion, the honor, the fame, the recognition. Uh, my name is not to be put out there. His name is to be put out there. There's only one name that we're interested in promoting. Now that became the commission. At that point now, as you can see, I've worked for the next, in fact, that was in 1979, so from 1979 to right now, I've been working on making disciples, training them, and how to do that, and how to break them out of the church structure so that they can no longer have a filtering system that everything that you say is filtered through that church structure or that church tradition or those the, the doctrines of that church. Uh, everything begins to be filtered through that. It's a very difficult thing to, to bring the pure, unadulterated Word of God to an individual who's indoctrinated uh, into uh, one of the modern uh, doctrines of the day, uh, Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, uh, Evangelical, charismatic, word of faith, any of those doctrines, once they get a hold of you, uh, you no longer are able to be progressive in the kingdom of God. You will progress in that doctrine, but you won't progress in the kingdom. So to be able to make a disciple, and a true need to make disciples, is someone who needs to be disciplined and understand the disciplines of the Word of God. Not disciplines in the sense of, of his own natural disciplines, but disciplined in the Word of God, disciplined in Christ where he realizes those disciplines are an absolute necessity. So I would present it to you in the same way that it was brought to me. God is wanting to make disciples. Discipleship cannot be done until Jesus Christ lays hold of you and delivers you out of just being a believer. And folks, a believer can believe anything. I mean, it doesn't matter what you say. Well, I don't believe that or I believe that. That's just a believer. They can believe anything. They can believe contrary to God or they can believe the same as God. It's more than a belief. It's a faith. 
And that faith takes you into a real strong discipline. The very term disciple is cut from the word disciplined. It's a disciplined learner, one who has learned the Word of God and become obedient to it. Not someone who just agrees with it or mentally assents to it, but someone who really agrees with it to where he's obedient to it and walks in it. And I give you the same appeal that Christ gave to me, that it's time for you yourself, the same as me, to make a decision, to come out from among the 5,000, come out from among the 70, step into the region and the realm of the 12, true discipleship, where you can be discipled and trained and come into the revelation of Jesus Christ and where you will lose the desire for fame, glory, and honor, money, wealth, and riches, and for your name to be known all over the world and people speak highly of you. And only, in fact, the good news of it is, is once you've been discipled and trained by Jesus, when it's finally all over with, you just have one person to promote, and that's no longer you. It's just Jesus Christ. You're only interested in Him. During this encounter with Him in Texarkana, to take you back just briefly on that, one of the things that was brought to my attention was the need for these disciples by Christ Himself referring to it and showing me the spiritual condition of this nation. And he began to instruct me at that time that we are in a time, an era, where God is restoring all things from a reverse order. We lost the apostles, we lost the prophets, and we lost the teachers. America, before the, the re great restoration began to happen with those three being restored, the teachers, uh, the prophets, the apostles, at that time there's nothing but pastors and uh, only an evangelist couldn't even hardly find their place in the body of Christ. They had to travel all the time. You only had two of the five primary doma gifts or, or ascension gifts restored to the body. Three were taken out and we saw a great restoration of teachers in the 70s. We saw a great restoration of the prophets in the latter part of the 80s and 90s. And then you're seeing the apostolic being restored right now. You're actually seeing in America where finally America after hundreds of years and darkness for thousands of years after the resurrection of Jesus, we're seeing all fivefold gifts. Uh, and the Greek word is doma. You'll hear me refer to the word doma gifts, which is a doma is a gift made a gift of. But you have now looking at all five gifts being restored in this nation, but still under the control, the leadership of one man rule called the pastoral. We'll take a look at that at some other time and show you how that works by how Christ brought in leadership and how that leadership had to be brought in through the method or the mode of discipleship. To come into true sonship and to come into true spiritual leadership, you have to go through discipleship. Discipleship is the method. It's the mode or the weapon of choice that Jesus Christ has given us. It's the bridge that he built to get you from a believer into leadership. And you go from a believer to a disciple, to a son of God, and from a sonship into leadership. So it's three primary, discipleship, sonship, leadership. I hope that you'll take that Receive it from the Lord Jesus Christ and take a look at your life. And if you are as I was and tired of just being a part of the 5,000, I decided I believed that I had a calling of God. I was selected, elected, chosen from my mother's womb, same as you were. And there's be good opportunity for you, for you to do the same thing, to make that decision. I need to come out from among the 5,000, and I need to do something for Jesus Christ. To do that, start your discipleship. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate sharing with you.